about principle eight. And principle eight is to yield myself to God to be used to bring the good news to others, both by my examples and my words. And what we're going to be talking about tonight is the, the three things uh, that I can share to help other people. The three things that God wants us to learn and tell other people about our own lives to help other people. Okay? Now I'll give you a little hint. It's not our strengths. Okay? It's not our strengths. The first one is share with other people how pain got my attention. We've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks now. We had a couple of great uh, two or three minute testimonies last week. And we talked about it almost an entire lesson about it the week before. Uh, the Bible verse there is, sometimes it takes a painful situation to make us change our ways in Proverbs 20, 30. Does anybody want to give a two or three minute testimony on that? Right now? No? Okay. <laughs> That, that verse actually reminds me of the, uh, the story of the prodigal son in, in Luke chapter 15 where the, the son took all his inheritance money and he went up to the sunset strip up in Jerusalem, right? Spent all his money on wine, women, and songs. And when all the money was gone, he ended up in the pig pen. And I love the little short verses in the Bible, right? I love this one too. It's in Luke 15, it's chapter, or verse 17. It says, he came to his senses. He came to his senses. Well, what about Elijah? Elijah is the guy in the Old Testament where he was in an area called Kerneth. And at Kerneth was like this great place. It had like this bubbling brook. And it was just a very vital place. The land was very fertile. And they said that the birds would come supernaturally drop food to them. You know, I'm thinking, what a great place. And here's one of my other favorite one short verses in the Bible. It's in 1 Kings 17, 7. It says, and then the brook dried up. Does anybody want to give a testimony on that? Does anybody's brook just dried up in their lives? You know? And Elijah's my boy, man. He he got pissed. He was upset with God. He was like, God, don't you love me anymore? Don't you love me? Why did you dry up the brook? Don't you love me anymore? And God says, of course I love you, Elijah. Of course I love you. I just don't want you at the brook anymore. I don't want you to put. Sometimes God uses pain in our life to get our attention. Our attention. And if you read Paul, Paul, in all all his writings and all his books, he had a common theme. There's five things that he was always honest about, and they're the ones on your handout here. The first one is my feelings. And for us guys, that's kind of hard. It's hard for guys to kind of open up about their feelings. It's a tough one. The Bible verse there is, we've spoken frankly with you, and we have opened up our hearts wide. What, what is, what's Paul trying to tell us there? He's saying, hey, I just didn't come here to teach to you tonight. I came here to open my heart. I came here to express my feelings to you. <laughs> the next one on the handout is my faults. My faults. We need to be honest about our faults. In Galatians 6, 5, it says, Each of us must bear the faults and burdens of his own, for none of us is perfect. We must be honest about our faults. The next thing we need to be honest, it's on your handout, is my failures. My failures. And the passage there is, uh, or the verses there is, um, 1 Timothy 1.15 says, Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. And what was Paul talking about there? He's saying, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am the second greatest Christian that ever lived, right? But I used to, like, was the event coordinator for some stonings of Christians, and I used to go, like, destroy churches, and I used to go, like, go door to door and try to find Christians to, you know, to get them stoned. So I'm one of the worst. So we need to be honest about our, our failures. The next one on the handout is my frustrations. My frustrations. The Bible verse there is, I have the desire to do what is right, but I cannot carry it out. Does anybody want to give a testimony on that? I mean, 
I did everything. I had all the intentions this week to do everything right. But I did wrong. You know, I didn't do everything right. And that's frustrating. I know there's people, there's people in my life, there's friends that I have right now, they're just so frustrated around this. Last but not least is fears. My fears. And again, this is a hard one, I think, just for men and women together. I mean, we, we hate to talk about our fears, you know? But there's two things, two good things that will happen when you open up and you share your fears and you're honest with your fears. The first one is it lowers the level of fear within yourself and it encourages other people. So what are you saying? What, what, what's that mean? Well, fear works best when it's kept a secret. So if you keep a fear of yours a secret and don't share it, it's just going to build up and build up and build up. But when you share and you're honest with somebody about that, it will lower the level of fear within yourself. And when when you do that, you're also encouraging someone, like saying, hey, I got, you know, I talk about my fear, and you say, wow, I've got that same fear. So it will encourage another person to be open and honest about their fear. Maybe that will encourage somebody else. See, there's a domino effect that can happen. Bible verse here is 2 Corinthians 12, 20. It says, I do admit that I have fears that when I come to you, you'll disappoint me and I'll disappoint you. I mean, what's Paul saying there? Paul's telling us that. Yeah, he's the second greatest Christian who ever lived, but he's broken. And that we just need to admit it. You know, we need to be honest about that. So those are the five things how God can use pain to get your attention and how we can do better at that where we can share and be honest with people. Okay? Yeah.